All right, so we got an optimization problem here. You wouldn't know that until you read it, okay? But it, we're talking optimization today. An open box is made from a piece of cardboard that's 16 by 30 by cutting out squares from the corners. So this is a fairly classic calculus problem. So there is our cardboard cutout. And it's saying they're going to cut squares out from the corners. I'm going to make it a little bigger. We're going to cut some oh, without the corners missing. Yeah. And without the corners missing, it is 16 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And they're telling you what size should the, the little squares be to get the maximum volume. All right. So when you fold this up, and we agree, and they'll try to make a nice isometric. It'll be open top. Open top. It's going to look like this. And it's going to be X tall, we agree, whatever those squares are. Now, how wide would it be? Uh, 16 minus 2x. 16 minus 2x. How long will it be? 30 minus 2x. Do we agree? All right. They want the largest volume possible. So we need to optimize this for volume. So you got to make a volume equation. So a volume is area of the base times the height. In this case, I'm going to skip writing that down. I'm just going to jump right to this. 30 minus 2x times 16 minus 2x times x. That is the volume of this shape. The condition, and a lot of times optimization problems have condition. The condition they give you is that you had to cut squares off, right? That's what now you're optimizing to cutting squares. That's what we're optimizing to, but we're going to optimize the volume. So I just I have to do the math here. I'll, I'll multiply these out. 480 minus 60x minus 32x plus 4x squared. Times x. I'll distribute. I combine these two here in the middle, and I'll distribute the x at the same time. I think the volume equation is 480x. This is negative 92x squared plus 4x. I think that is the volume of a 16 by 4 30 flat cardboard piece with x cutouts. I think that's the volume every time. This problem is easy for one big reason. What do we see? We have volume. We want to optimize volume. And is it in one variable? Yeah. Is it based on time? No. So it's optimization, not related to rate. So you guys read D prime as 480 minus 92 times 2 is 184x plus 12x squared. And we want to optimize, so I want to make V prime equal to 0. Now, Longhand, we'd have to complete the square here. I think, or use quadratic formula. Because do we agree if we're going to set this equal to zero, we get, and if I write it in the proper order, we're going to get this. All right. To solve this, we would have to either complete the square, quadratic formula, or I think the problem this top on the AP was that you use the calculator. So let's grab our TI. Alright, so on the left here, you'll see a screenshot. I enter 12x squared minus 184x plus 4 is equation on my key. I need your plus dot. I think you guys have 84, but the same idea. And you hit enter, and it takes you here. It's bound. I'm going to guess, I don't know, let's guess 2. Because I'm guessing, you know, maybe 2 centimeters is a guess. I will solve it. And it's 3.33333 repeating. All right, so I'll capture this. So, by GI 3 I get 3.3 .3 centimeters per piece is the critical point. Do we agree? Now, I admit I'm going to be smaller. So, we used our TI as quick. We found the answer. Now, the question is this is the answer. The question is can you prove that it maximizes the volume. All right, we'll use the first derivative rule. So if I put in a number less than 3, 
And I think the easiest number is what if I plug in zero? Do you guys agree if I plug zero into this equation right here? You get 480? So it's positive. Oh, so v prime of zero, which is, is going to be greater than zero. What do you think happens when you have v prime, say, of five? All right, when you do this, you're going to get it to be Oh, wait a minute. There's another answer here. All right. There's another answer here. Zero. If I look for a second answer, I might tell I'm going to find it. If I do V of, if I do V prime of three, guess what I get? This is going to be negative. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a negative number here. All right. I just didn't do my math correctly here. I just paused and I looked. V prime of 3 is actually is positive, and v prime of 4 is negative. So it goes from positive to negative, and since it's a continuous function, we recognize that as a maximum. Thus, the answer to this is the dimensions of the square is 3.3333 centimeters, which we should recognize as 3 and 1 third centimeter square, which should be cut to maximize the volume. Again, this is optimization. We optimize the volume by using our knowledge of first derivative rule in the logarithm equation. Okay, here's the next easy optimization problem. Find the area of the largest rectangle can be described as a right triangle with legs three and four. The two sides of the rectangle lie along its legs. So first of all, if it's a right triangle with legs three and four, what's the hypothesis? Five. Right. So you have to picture this is going on. There's our triangle, and they're laying a rectangle in along this leg, this leg. And it's got to be there somewhere, right? All right. Well, I don't know if it's square or not yet. They want to maximize, but we got we got to figure something out. So, again, what when we look at that rectangle, what is the area of the rectangle right now? X squared. Well, it's, not a, it's a rectangle. I don't know if it's the same yeah, length. X times Y. X times Y. So the area of this thing is X times Y. And I want to maximize it. Thus, I have to get down to one variable so I can take a derivative. The problem here is on this problem right now, there's no relationship between X and Y. That's obvious, maybe, is the way to say it. I see a relationship. What, what relates X and Y? Yeah, three and the four. The hypotenuse of this right triangle. Well, can you guys picture as you move up or down here along this line, okay, along the hypotenuse, that's going to change x and y. But that's a line. We should be able to write an equation that represents this. All right. Okay. So what if we just stick the origin of a grid here? What would be the equation of the hypotenuse if it was a line? We agree it's a downhill slope. So the slope is negative four thirds. Where would it intercept the y axis up here? Plus four. Plus four. I think the equation of this hypotenuse in this case is y equals negative four thirds x plus four. Or, yeah. Did I just relate x and y? Yeah. So now let's go back to our area equation. I gotta get in one variable. I am going to chuck my line equation in place of y. And I am going to distribute, definitely this time, it pays to distribute. Is that a really easy equation to take the derivative of? Yeah. Sure. So we take the derivative. A prime equals negative a third x. All right. We want to optimize. So we're going to set a prime to zero. All right, you guys agree 8 thirds x will equal 4. This is a time where I've seen students grab their calculator because they get so used to using solver. If you use solver for this, I'm going to yell at you. All right, you guys agree. I get x is 3 halves. All right. It says find the area of it. Well, I know x is 3 halves. I don't have to find the y to find the I can go right back to this equation. I don't need y. I just want the area. 
I do want to check to make sure it's a maximum. We'll do that in a second. But I'm going to start here. I'm going to get the area. I'm going to get 9 fourths here times this. 9 fourths times 4 thirds. About three. And you have three plus six. I think the area is three units squared. All right. If I want to make sure that this is optimized and is a maximum, I can look. This is my critical point. I have to make sure that a prime, say, of something less than three halves. If I do a prime of one, one and two. Yeah. If I put in one here, I agree it's positive. If I put in two. I agree it's negative. Again, first derivative rule, negative to positive. I like to visualize it in my head. So by the first derivative rule, we know that there's a maximum at that critical point. It's a function of continuous. Let's come back to that. Absolutely the line. So the area of the maximum area of a rectangle put into a 3, 4, 5 right triangle is 3 units if the rectangle laid one way. Next problem here. Metal storage tank volume B is constructed in the shape of a right circular cylinder surmounted by a hemisphere, which dimensions require the least amount of metal. Well, first of all, you have to be able to picture this. There's the right circular cylinder, and on top is what I would just call a dome. And I'm not a great artist, okay? But we got this going on. And they're saying the volume of this is B, which is a constant, right? And they want least amount of metal. Well, we need a couple of equations. First of all, we know volume equals area of the base times height for this. Tyler Parker to the office, please. Tyler Parker, would you please report to the office? And we know the volume of a sphere, a total sphere, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. I would argue right now we have... No, 2 thirds. Exactly. This is going to be half of that. The sphere will be half. I'm going to call this r. I'm going to call this H. So I'm going to tell you the volume of this whole tank, the V that they call V up here, is equal to half of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So, like you said, 2 thirds pi r cubed plus pi r squared H. That is the volume of that in terms of R and H. They want to know the dimensions that require the least amount of metal. Now, obviously, this is going to end up in terms of R and H, all right? Well, I have to figure out the surface area. I'll use blue for this. Well, again, for a sphere, you have to know the, that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, okay? And we'll have to determine the surface area of this tank. And what we don't want to get caught up in is we have to realize that we have the side walls of the tank, the bottom, and then half the dome. So we're going to have, that's for a whole sphere. We're going to need half of that. For the, if I call this, oh, I wrote S, C, this should have been surface area, and surface area of the sphere, total. If I say this is a cylinder, you guys agree there's pi r squared to the bottom, plus, and again, circumference times the height, right? Well, let's not do pi v, let's do 2 pi r for circumference. Is everybody with me on that? So we do 2 pi r, h. So I'm going to argue the surface area of this whole thing is, again, half of the sphere, which is 2 pi r squared, plus pi r squared, plus 2 pi r h. you got some like terms. Let's take care of those at least. And I get 3 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And I want to optimize the volume for a minimum surface area here. What you had to catch, I should have backed up. What dimensions require the least amount of metal? We want to optimize the amount of metal, which is surface area. Okay? Obviously, it's some amount of thickness that they're going to predetermine, but this is optimizing the surface area. The problem is, I can't take the derivative of this as it stands. You need to get rid of R or H. When I look at the original volume equation, you should catch that H has one place here. You're going to have to sub solve this equation for H and then substitute H out of the surface area. Now, that's kind of a pain. Minus two R squared, R cubed divided by pi R squared. I think that is H. 
All right. Now we can plug that in, and I'll rewrite it here, and it's going to get ugly. Surface area equals 3 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times v minus 2 thirds pi r cubed all over pi r squared. And this is nice. Some things cancel here. So let's take care of the cancel. You read the pi's cancel and one of the r's cancel. All right. And now I'm going to distribute. I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to distribute the two to both of these terms. And at the same time, I'm going to put R under both of the terms. Because I think the surface area formula that I want to use to take the derivative of is this. 3 pi R squared plus 2V over R minus 4 thirds. And if I do this, I get pi R squared. Oh, hey, that works nice. Because when I take R cubed divided by R, I get R squared. So I still have some like term. So I will combine those two like terms. I think I get 5 thirds pi r squared plus 2v r to the negative 1. And what do we want to optimize? We want to optimize surface area. So we need to take the derivative. If you want to pause here and try to work it out to an answer, I will just make it appear with an answer here next. All right, so here it is. I take the derivative. I set it equal to zero to optimize it. It's a critical point. I solve for r, and I end up with cube root of quotient 3v over 5 pi. All right, that is the radius. To find the height, you have to plug that back into your original h equation. If I just move that down the board so I can see it, it's going to get a little ugly. All right. Not so bad when you plug into the numerator because it's r cubed, which we know is 3v over 5 pi, shown right here. But in the bottom, you're going to have to take the square. So if we want to solve this, and I don't, the original problem said what dimensions will require the least amount of metal. That's the radius. I would argue, especially for the AP, you know, r cubed is 3v over 5 pi that we probably would be able to leave this in this format. It would say do not simplify. And that's the answer for the height. And I have found the radius and the height for a fixed volume B of a circular tank with a hemisphere dome. Basically guys think about this from a farming tank. This is a silo. Right? Yeah. This is a silo. 